Far out in eastern Idaho, there is a remote test range where researchers from Idaho National Laboratory test munitions, armored materials, and breaching techniques for national security. Besides a few trailers, trucks, various targets, and safety bunkers, there is only sagebrush desert as far as the eye can see. My name is Alexandra Branscombe, here on this windy day to witness a brand new capability, a flash x-ray. The flash x-ray is used to take high-speed images, but not like a high-speed camera would. The x-ray is so fast that it can capture a bullet at the moment it hits a target. Jeff Lacey, the technician in charge of running the x-ray, is here to explain. X-ray is an old technology, and basically all you do is generate high-energy light, or gamma rays, that can travel through low-density stuff like air and smoke and fireballs and things like that and see what's going on inside of a blast event or in this case today we're looking at shape charges you can, so you can see how your shape charge jet uh, evolves and flies or you can look at uh, what's going on when a bullet hits armor or something like that. Today the team is taking photos of copper jets shot from a shape charge. The explosives in the shape charge surround a copper cone and when the explosive is triggered the cone collapses on itself and becomes a long stream of copper particles, or a jet. To freeze the fast action of a ballistic or blast event, Lacey needs a very short, rapid pulse of x-rays, fast enough to make a speeding bullet look like it is just hovering in space. Today, the experiment is a simple setup, firing the shape charge down at a steel target at a very close range. James Shondell, the explosive use supervisor, explains this setup. Right now, Jeff's setting up his brake screens, obviously. And that top hat that you see right there is to shield the flash x-ray from getting damaged. Um, Jeff right now is wiring in, wiring in the flash x-ray. Below that is a stack of armor that they're going to see how, they're going to eventually take that stack apart and see how far these shape charges are penetrating. There is about a 10 inch air gap between the shape charge and the steel targets. Lacey tapes a thin paper to the bottom of the protective shell where the shape charge is placed. The paper is a trigger. When the copper pierces through it, it will produce a small pulse to trigger the flash x-ray. Somewhere within that 10 inch air gap, the team hopes to capture a full image of the copper jet in flight right before it slams into the steel plates. The researchers clear the test pad and huddle behind a concrete bunker. Shondell assumes his position at the explosives box. The force of the explosive has shot the copper deep into the layers of steel. Later, the team will take these plates apart to see exactly how far the copper has penetrated. In a small trailer-turned-laboratory, armor scientist Henry Chu scans the phosphorescent film into a laptop. The x-ray image that comes up shows a long, broken line about to hit a huge block of steel. This is the jet going from left, uh, uh, right to left. So now, the jet, which is a stream of soft copper, high-temperature particles, and the temperature of the copper at this time when it's streaming out, it's roughly about 600 degrees centigrade. It's very hot, but it's not molten. This is actually a stream of particles. And this is the tip. This is the apex of the, uh, the cone. With this image, Chu and the other researchers can look at the physics of the shape charge and calculate its velocity. Understanding the properties of this powerful projectile will help them create armor materials that can hold up to this force. The flash x-ray makes this type of research possible. With normal methods, you can see it before you hit the detonator button, and you can see what the, the hole it made later, but you can't see what's going on with the weapon. This has been Alexandra Branscombe for Idaho National Laboratory.